Where did you get the idea? Like, how did you learn about operating costs and stuff like that? Dude, just by doing it. Like, yeah? and my business partner and I, we have one thing that I think is in common with us is that when we decide we're doing something, we just go for it. Like, regardless of whether or not we know what we're doing, you know? And that was the case with the rent. I had no idea. I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started renting cars. Yeah. I also didn't expect it to, like, kind of pop off the way that it did. So, like, we're not where we want to be yet, but we're a lot farther along than I thought we would be. Yeah. So, we just, we just trial and error the whole thing, dude. Lots of error. Lots of error. (laughs) Right, dude? You know? No, I think the funniest story, Ethan, that I've ever had in the car business was, so we had a guy working at Nissan, Mm -hmm. a young kid, and he was just slinging cars. He was probably selling like 20, 25 a month. And when you're selling 20, 25 a month at at a decent dealership, you're making $8,000, $10,000 a month. And so he just high rolling, lived lived with his mom, wasn't doing anything. Oh, he's living in Germany. (laughs) He's got no bills. And uh, (laughs) so he goes and buys this certified pre-owned uh, AMG 63 coupe Benz, oh, just, course, right. just a freaking flagship car. And so we get there and he brings it to everybody. We're all like, Oh, that's so cool. But in my mind and in some of the older sales guys, minds, like, we know what that is, dude. So it had yellow, the yellow pinstripes uh-huh. down the car. Yeah, yeah. And then it had the custom pinstripes on the wheels. Oh yeah. And the, the, the low profile tires. stuff. Yeah. I was like, bro, did you get the wheel and tire package? And he goes, no, dude, everybody knows that's bullshit. And I was like, not on that, dude. I was like, that wheel and tire, one wheel and one tire together, probably four grand, yeah, bro. For real. For real. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, no way. I was like, yeah, but, t- but you got the oil change package. He's like, no, I told him it was bullshit. I was like, are you? <laughs> <laughs> we just laughed at him when we were like, good luck, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Depending on the car, sometimes you just got to go for it. You know what I mean? It's like, bro, like well, if, you're, yeah, sure. if you're buying something high end, like. Yeah. And that's what we told him. We were like, dude, yeah, if you bought a Nissan. Uh, you know, if you bought a Nissan Sentra, sure, dude, the wheel and tire package and the oil change package is bullshit. Sure. But you just bought a hundred and twenty thousand dollar car. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, dude, that's the thing, right? I'm like, in my like, case, like, I don't, I don't have to worry. Like I've got the sure, shop. And sure. Like, I, yeah. I'll so you're like, it. I'm like, no, just, yeah. like, don't even try to pitch that to me. I'll tell them up front. Like, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. I've got a shop <laughs> and I got this rental car company. Do not try to pitch any of that shit to me. Cause I yeah. won't take it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the Supra for whatever reason, it was, the well, exception. the Supra, like, I was, well, just I was those, like, I'll just take it. Those, but those high, those higher end ones, even in Toyota, like the Supra right. or like the Civic type R or something like sure, that. Like, yeah. It's like, dude, it's just, it's just at that point, it's like prepaid insurance. Right. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Like, and especially for us in the rental business, like I know somebody's going to curb the wheels, right? Right. Like I know somebody's going to, the Supra got totaled. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't even have it anymore. How long did you have the Supra before? That one made it a year. That one made it a year. So that was actually pretty good for us. So what happened? So having a car for a year is good? Well, in that case, yeah. Like a sports car. Yeah. Yeah. In the sports car. What do you mean? So people just rally it? Well, dude, we had one that lasted like three weeks. We had an Audi TTRS. We didn't even, it had temporary tags on it still. Whoa. Yeah. And yeah. so you put it out on the road, you let mm-hmm. them rent it. What the hell do they do, dude? Dude, people go nuts in them. Like the Supra, the Supra was different because it wasn't like the guy who was driving the car ended up not being at fault. So our, our renter wasn't at fault, but he was still, he was hauling ass when he, when he, <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, like, it wasn't your fault, dog, but you were yeah, going like, he, got, he, got, he got T-boned. <laughs> He got T-boned, but he was driving fast, dude. So he was going fast. This other guy didn't see him because he was hauling, and he got T-boned. And, dude, I'm not even kidding you. It ripped the back wheel and tire off the car, and it slid like 100 yards. Like it Holy just, cow! It dude. Hammered it, dude. So when somebody mind. wrecks a car like that in the rental world, what happens? Well, in that case, the dude who hit the car, his insurance paid us out. It took forever, but yeah. eventually they paid us out. But the guy who crashed our Audi TT. That dude, he was at fault. He literally drove it off a cliff. Like, I'm not even joking. <laughs> if you haven't seen the YouTube video, it's on the Diesel Brothers YouTube channel. We had the Diesel Brothers come out and... and oh, pick it up. Yeah, out. Oh, was like, that like Matt's toe recovery? No, or? dude. These, oh. It's the Diesel. It's the, the dudes with the okay. beards. Okay, you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, Like, you ever yeah, seen yeah, those guys? Yeah, yeah, we called them up Unfortunately. because... Unfortunately. Dude, it was, down in a, it was down in a ravine. Oh, and so wow. it's like, we, we couldn't get it out. And so... But this dude drove it off the cliff like ditched it down there, left it there. His insurance ended up paying us out. And that was also a nightmare. So that's typically what happens, right? Like whoever, whoever's at fault pays for the car. So like we've, you never knock on wood. Like we've never had to file an insurance claim. Yeah. So right. Because typically everybody is insured. Exactly. Dude, that's wild, man. So what kind of like, uh, do you try to, cause you're in the high end 
yeah. kind of rental. Yeah, yeah. So you don't do like normal stuff. You do like the nice stuff. Yeah. I mean, we do have a couple normal things because we like yeah. to cater to everybody, but we sure. try to focus on like luxury and higher end cars. And, and, and most people just do that for like one or two nights or what? Yeah, it depends. So we get we get people that are traveling into town that are like rent them long, like you know for a week or whatever while they're on vacation because back home they drive you know a Maserati yeah. and so they want to drive a Maserati <laughs> here. It's just like it just makes sense for them. Yeah. And then you get the people that are like, I just want to experience it or like I'm trying to flex on Instagram, show off to somebody. And oh. so it's like, <laughs> We get, we get a little bit of both. Yeah, that's dude. wild. Too. It's interesting. And you can always tell who's who, like, pretty quick. Like, yeah. you know, this guy's you a fake flexer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. How can you tell who's, like, legit, who, like, knows luxury vehicles, who owns one? And, like, I mean, because you, if you, because I feel the same way. Like when, when I used to work at Ben's and stuff, we could tell who had money and who didn't. Right. Like that's why I always say there's two types of Ben's customers. Yeah. The people who can afford it and the people who can't. Right. And you never <laughs> like, want to judge them, right? Like, right, like, right, like, right. I, like I never like really actually know, like there could be some kid that rolls in and he could be a millionaire and he could yeah. look like a scrub. You know what I mean? But usually it's an age thing, right? Like yeah. if I get an older guy renting like a Yukon from me, for example, like I know that older guy probably, or like a Range yeah. Rover, like he probably just drives a Range Rover back home. Yeah. And then he sends me his insurance policy and sure enough, he drives a Range Rover yeah. back home. You know yeah. what I mean? And then you get the kid that's like barely old enough to rent a car or he's like a local rapper or a local artist or yeah. a local model. Like, yeah. you know, those guys are just, th and like respect the hustle, right? Like yeah. they're trying to make it and like they're trying to show off for somebody and like we help provide that experience for them. But like yeah. you can usually, we can usually tell yeah, pretty you can quick. Like, well, you know, but do you, for those guys who are younger, I mean, you got to be 25, 21, 21, 21. Our insurance, our insurance will let you rent at 21. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's risky. Yeah. Bro. We put, we've put a couple 21 year olds behind the wheel of a, like I eight Supra. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck that, like dude. That. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've driven an I eight. That thing's hungry. bro. Yeah. Yeah. They're quick for what they are. Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely not like a slow car. No, no, no. But, it, but I remember too, like, cause I agree with you. I, I've ridden in a lot of really fast cars, but that I eight, I just felt like we were doing like way too fast on an undisclosed road going in undisclosed in Mexico. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, in Mexico. <laughs> and, uh, and I just, you know, we were hitting the top speed and I just felt that thing. It just wanted to keep going. It was like, and it's comfortable, you, right? Oh, the thing yeah. about the I eight is you could be doing 120 comfortably. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's the thing. That's, That's what's what dangerous I'm saying. about it. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, wow, dude, this thing just wants to go more. Yeah. We know? have that same issue with the Supra. People will be getting pulled over all the time too. Like people, people get tickets in our cars like regularly. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you think they get tickets in the car because they're like ah they're never gonna find me well uh, dude i don't know what it is but they get pulled over and they like they get a ticket and it's written yeah. to them yeah. sometimes they get left in the car that's how we know <laughs> it'd be a piece of paper hey, in you'd the be car. like hey dog like, you left your hey, ticket yo, you left your ticket <laughs> yeah. come get it <laughs> i'm not paying dude, it. that's hilarious bro yeah. how'd you get into the high-end rental business dude i literally started from scratch i, I had a mini cooper that was just an extra car and uh -huh. it was just chilling. And I was like, I, I was like, I can either sell this car or maybe I'll try renting it out. And so I started, do you, do you know about Turo, the yeah. rental car platform? Yeah. So that's how I started, right? Is I, I put this little mini Cooper up on Turo and I made like five, 600 bucks my first month. And I was like, okay, I paid 5,000 for the car. Like this is, this isn't bad. Oh, whoa, dude, yeah. that's crazy. I was like, this is, wow. this is, this could work. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then I went and like, I like dabbled in it a little bit. I got another car at the same time I told like, at the time, it was my sister's boyfriend. He's now my brother-in-law and my business partner. I was like, hey, dude, like, check out this Turo thing. It's pretty sick. So he started dabbling in it a little bit, and we just got a couple of cars and got it rolling. And then starting it like like two about two years ago from now, we just head dive yeah. right into it. We just decided, okay, let's go to a bunch of different banks. We'll go get pre-approved at all these different banks, and then we'll, we'll finance a deal at each one all in one month. So I went and bought right, five, yeah, so five, six cars. Yes, because, yeah, cars. they don't check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right? You got to do it on the same day. Yeah, though, dude. hit your credit report the next month and phew, yeah. it goes downhill for yeah. like a couple months. But. No, 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 but you'll be fine. But yeah, I'm exactly. saying like, it worked out fine. But I'm saying like if they, because we had guys do this too. Yeah. Oh, I worked sure. finance at the dealership. Oh, so then you know. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, you know so I was just telling them, I was just telling them like, what are you doing this for? They're like, Turo. I'm like, okay, uh, you want to go buy a couple more? I'm like. Oh yeah, dude, you probably want to do that quick because yeah. they're going to find out they're going right, to catch exactly, up and then they're exactly. going to stop you. <laughs> yeah. So like no, that's what we did. It's like credit card stacking. Exactly. Like as soon as they, as soon idea. as they find out, you're done. You're done. Yeah, they're exactly. Gonna catch you so off. that's what happens. But 
the only way that we knew about that is because my my brother-in-law was a loan officer at the time. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew the ins and outs, too. So <laughs> we were able to work that system to our yeah. advantage, and it worked. And, of course, it's sketchy, right? You go take out half a million dollars in car loans with, like, no money to your name. It's like, yeah. shit, I hope it works. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it did, obviously. Yeah. And so we started there, and we were running separate things, me and him. And then eventually, like, the goal was always to combine and, like, like build a brand, and that's what wow. we've done now. That's pretty cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. So you started Random Montero. Yeah. Found out it was pretty lucrative. Yeah. I mean, it. we're kind of in that day and age now where it's like everybody just like, you know, it's kind of that share economy. Yeah, right? like, totally. So like, yeah. Ride Uber, sharing. Yeah, yeah, all of it. Uber. Oh, I just saw this, uh, this new model, this new concept on when I was scrolling through my Facebook that it was like somebody's creating a tech company for home gyms. It's kind of like Airbnb, but for home gyms, really you just like go rent, you know what I mean? Like you're in a town, you pull up this app and they're like, Oh, there's a home gym right next to me. I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to the big Vasa cause it's packed or whatever. So, you so pull up? this guy, this guy outfitted his garage for a, a gym. So you like go book it. I was like, Damn, dude. That's wild. We're getting like, this is getting wild. Well, yeah, this they've got other crazy. things. So they got like, you know about Neighbor. It's like a yes, storage yes. thing, right? It's like, dude, yeah. they've got all of these. And the thing is, is like, that's great. Yeah. Because that just provides opportunities for people to make money yeah. in new ways. And like, if you're creative and you're smart, dude, you can make bank. I mean, we started, like when we were doing the Turo thing, we realized like, dude, we can build an actual business out of this. So that's like, cool. That's what, like Turo really did it for us. And yeah. like, like, shout out to them for that. But like, <laughs> that and that only because... Yeah, they're Turo. hard to work with now. <laughs> no, dude, Turo is terrible to work with. Yeah, now. yeah, right. Like it's they take a lot, a lot of money. They take a lot it's of money. A lot. They take a lot of money. The problem is, is they tax so many fees onto the customers. end. it's like if I'm renting a car for two hundred a day, the customer's paying four hundred, and I'm getting one hundred and eighty. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and that's so like, like Airbnb like, now. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. I, I know, and people are like, you know, and I guess there's there might be some deals with Airbnb, but I've never found a spot where like a hotel is. A hotel is more expensive than an Airbnb. Usually, like, I don't know, maybe it's because I go bougie places like Anaheim or something like that. Or like, but like, I don't know, we rent the hotel and it's always cheaper than Dude, an Airbnb. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to Vegas this weekend. Yeah. Same thing. Checked Airbnbs, checked hotels. It's like taking the hotel. Yeah, just take the hotel because yeah. you're right there with everything, yeah. right? I mean, Airbnb makes sense if you're renting out a whole house and you've got like a bunch of friends or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah. pulling it together well, but, or whatever. But like, like I, dude, but just I like heard, a single room or whatever. Yeah, but I heard you can't even do that anymore. I, really? I heard, so like we were on Airbnb. We were renting one up in Park City and we were there for a, we were there for a, a funeral. Like, so the, we were going to just, I mean, it was like three or four families and we were going to pull our money. And they, they blocked us for a second because they thought it was like a party. They saw everybody's names on there. But then we like, so we had to call them. And there's some exceptions to the rule. Like, hey, this is a funeral. Like we're all coming in. This is a big house. Like we're all coming in. So is that the issue then? They don't want people they, like partying. partying. Like uh, they use them. They which use makes them. sense. So, and sometimes like they'll do parties or they'll do like illegal activities. Like they'll sure. rent an Airbnb for like, <laughs> for like a shroom journey. They'll like turn it, they'll like turn it <laughs> into like, a trap house. For like, a, yeah, for, like a, for like an MDMA journey or something. And they're like, well, I get that. That's probably yeah, okay, not what right, you should do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, dude, it's the same thing with rental cars, right? Like we try not yeah. to be like too strict about it because as long as it comes back in one piece and it's not damaged or whatever, like, yeah. and, and we take a deposit, but like, dude, yeah, we find stuff in cars all the time, bro. And you're like, geez. Dude, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's the craziest thing you found on a car? Dude, we had a truck get stolen. There's a YouTube video about it on our YouTube channel. Very small YouTube channel, but it does yeah, exist. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Right. Zodic Rentals. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right <laughs> anyway, on. yeah. Uh, dude, this guy stole our truck. It was like a homeless dude. And the situation was weird. Like, renter drops the truck off, doesn't lock up the keys properly because we were gone. It was like after hours. Doesn't right. lock up the keys properly. Guy steals truck, but we have trackers in them. So like yeah. we knew that the truck was driving around. So we chased the guy down and like he ended up getting arrested. Like we called the cops. They followed us around. We followed the guy around. We pinned him and they yeah. hauled him away. But dude, in that there was like weed, meth, shrooms, freaking, I want to say <laughs> cocaine. They found a flashlight in there, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> like it was wild. It was disgusting yeah, you, too. The thing you is, you took that homeless guy's party, bro. Yeah, that's dude. That's what we were saying. Like that was the joke. It's like, man, at least they were having a good time. What is that? What is that? Have you seen the other guys when the homeless guys steal the Prius and he's like, "Dirty Mike and the boys." No. He's like, "We will have another orgy in your car." <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. No way. Yeah, dude. It was crazy. But then we got the truck back and yeah. it was disgusting, dude. Like his 
Homeless yeah. dude had been in it for a day or whatever. So what happens in that case? So we just got the truck back and we just had to clean it all just, up. We kept just all the shit done. though. Yeah. Not not the flashlight. We didn't keep the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what I was. <laughs> or I the was drugs. Say, we didn't yeah, keep the drugs. They okay. took so the cops there took all of that. But bro, there was a longboard in there. We oh, got, okay, that's the cool. bolt cutters that he used to cut open our lockbox. Like we keep those. <laughs> that's our trophy, dude. Like you know, <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. killer, man. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So a lot of cool, a lot of lot of cool stories. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, and then you added an an auto body repair shop. Yeah, just not auto body, but we do like or, mechanics. Okay, like, mechanic, okay. like auto man, auto mechanic repair. Okay, was, I was gonna say mechanic repair sounds better than auto body. Yeah, because auto body sounds like you're laundering money, dude. Yeah, it's like where's I mean, the chop maybe, shop? Maybe. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I know how you're getting all of your luxury cars. I know, okay? right? <laughs> Got to do it somehow. None of them have VIN numbers. I'm yeah, just right. <laughs> no, dude, the just the, the auto just shop was before. Oh, before, okay, cool. Yeah, so my dad and I started that more or less like just as an idea. It was a it was a goal of ours for a long time to like yeah. do our own thing. My dad has experience managing tire shops. He oh, was wow. like with Les Schwab for 20 something years. And I always wanted my own shop because I mean, I've been a car guy forever. Uh -huh. So he and I kind of kind of put our heads together and we bought a pre-existing spot that was really small, kind of like mom and pop and rebranded it teamed up with a co-op called Point S. I don't know if you've seen uh -huh, like the Point yeah. S tires. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're the Point S tire down in Spanish Fork. And uh, Oh, okay. So is it like yeah. a franchise? Yeah. So it's, it's okay. a co-op, which is a little different than franchise. Okay. It's structured very similarly, but there's like no franchise fees. We can like make our own rules. Basically, the idea of a co-op is a bunch of individual owners come together to be able to like to have buying power, right? Yeah. So they're all branded the same. We're all branded as Point S tire so that we can buy tires at a discounted you know, bulk, uh, bulk rate. That's cool. And so, yeah. So it's super sick because we don't have to worry about like any of the franchise rules or fees. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's, we get the benefit the benefit of, of being like a that, large name. Yeah. The point is brand. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Dude. It's pretty sick. So we started that a year before the rental car thing and you know, one wasn't enough. So I was like, man, I got to be doing more than one thing at a time. Yeah. So that's how the rental thing. <laughs> so you got your, so be. you got the, your point S and then, um, and then your rental. Thing. And then the, yeah. Then what Zotic. else are you guys going to do? You guys got big plans or we what? do, we do. Yeah. We're working on some stuff right now. Zotic detailing is unofficially launched. It's, it's live on Instagram. That's about it. Kind of trying to, trying <laughs> yeah. to do detailing is a tough gig, man. It is. Everybody's doing it. That's the thing. Everybody that's does the thing. It, and so, and we're not, we're not trying to like reinvent the wheel with it or anything like that. The reality of it is, is we've, been detailing for the last two years because yeah, so you might I mean, as well our, try, our yeah. rental cars were automatically bringing them in. We're detailing them and it's like, we might as well just capitalize on it. And instead of just doing our own mm. offer it as an extra thing that Zotic does. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing will be like, if you need to get your car detailed, then we've got a rental car for you. you know oh, I mean? like cool. We can swap you out for something for the day yeah. and we can give it to you at a discounted rate so that you're driving something nice or something comparable to what you have but yeah. you're paying less than you would pay to just rent yeah. it regularly and you're getting your you're getting dude i know i i actually i actually was the operator for somebody was one of my friends was going to open one of these these uh um detail shops yeah and i was gonna i was gonna come in and run it for him uh -huh. as like he was like absentee i was gonna be the operator and dude but it was so hard man it's difficult like it's not yeah i mean it's not it's not for somebody who like I, I don't know, dude. It's just, I see a lot of these guys go out there, like, I'm going to go detail cars, and it's like... Two weeks later, they're done, right? Yeah, dude, it's tough. Well, bro. here's what's hard, and I, here's what I see a lot of the time, is you get these people that they want to start it. There's some businesses in this world, there's businesses that are easy to start, yeah. and there's businesses that are hard to start. Detailing, wrapping cars, renting cars, yeah. those are all easy businesses to start. Yeah. They're hard businesses to keep open though. Yeah. Right? That's the biggest thing is like right. these detail guys, it's not hard to go spend $10,000 on detailing equipment and get yourself like a little setup uh -huh. and start detailing cars. But what's hard is like getting clients, marketing, sales, like those are skills that you have to have in order Dude. to like actually make something go. Well, and not only that, but like you're in such a, such a saturated industry, dude. Oh, totally. So like, because there's, there's also, it's funny that you mentioned that because there's two ways to kind of, there's two ways to, to scale money in a business. So you got economies of scale, which is up. Right. So you're like, the more cars you detail, the less, the the more the costs go down. And so now we're scaling. Right. And then there's like scope, which is. I have a rental company, so it makes sense to have a mechanic shop. So it makes sense to have a detail exactly. shop. So it makes sense to now become a state farm franchise insurance guy. Right. We own the insurance. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like scope is out. Scale is up. And so when, when you, when you have the scope, 
like it becomes a lot easier. So I think a detail company, when you already own a rental company, like that's a no brainer. Exactly. Well, here's the reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can make, I can make $0 for the next two years detailing and it would be okay because I've made $0 for the last two years detailing yeah. and you know, we're doing fine. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, well, but that's the power, right? Is like, Hey, we'll detail your car for X. We'll give you a rental for X. Right. And we're the same price as the other guy. And now you're like, Boom, that's We're it. a one-stop shop yeah, that's now, right? Boom, that's exactly. It. Which is which is a lot different than these guys who go get a, a van, spend the money and right. go, and go detail because Which no disrespect tough. to them because you can do that. No, no, no. I know a lot of my I have a lot of homies that. who do that. Exactly. Just, but I always tell them I'm like that's a tough, it's tough. That's a large order, it's definitely bro. Tough. That's a tall order. Yeah. 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 So Dude, it, that's just, that's just cool that you're, that you've got a lot of that going, especially like the detailing, especially some of these other things, because, yeah. um, you know, and, and how old are you, dude? I uh, just turned 25. Oh, good for you, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so 25. I made that 25 joke. <laughs> My bad dog. What, what joke did you make? Oh, the 25. Oh, so typically I'm, you have to rent cars at 25. Well, yeah, bro. That's what I, that Where was the joke the, for the longest time. I was like, bro, I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not even old enough to rent my own stuff. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, dude. Isn't yeah, that crazy? Yeah. Uh, because I, yeah, I remember being, we went to Florida and I was like 24 with my wife Yeah. and they were like, you had to, we had to pay all this extra money because we weren't 25. And I was like, dude, stop it. Stupid. <laughs> I was it's like, that's so, so dumb. Stupid. Uh, I was like, I've never had anything on my record and I still have yeah. to pay. They're like, yep. I'm like, All right. yeah, they, yeah, they don't care, dude. Yeah, I was like, we don't care. Make money where they can, I guess. <laughs> I guess, dude. That's yeah. ridiculous, man. Yeah. So what's the, what's the coolest car you have right now? Probably the i8, honestly, which yeah, the is I8, it's like, really it's cool. And we've got a nice wrap on it. We did the wrap ourselves. That's another thing we're working on is we'll, Doing along like with the detailing, like we'll probably company. offer wraps Do like as a, well. Do like wraps and yeah. like, um, what do they call that? Clear bra and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like dude, like paint protection. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty yeah. sweet gig to be in. Yeah, exactly. And the same thing, a lot of people doing it, but we wrapped the I8 ourselves. We could, yeah. we've been wrapping all sorts of shit for as long as we've been in business and yeah. we make no money doing it. It doesn't matter. But if we have it to offer to our customer base. Then well, I think that rental is just a good base because right. like a lot of people go like, right. I remember working in the car industry and we, People have people go do the paint protection, clear bra, the clear shield, whatever they call it now. Um, we do we do those. We do tint. We do yeah. all this stuff, and we, they'd have to leave their car. So they would trade in a car, buy a new one, get clear bra, tint, a wrap or whatever, and then, like, we would have to provide them a rental, and it was, like, a huge deal to, like, because right. we don't have, I mean, everybody thinks car dealership, you have cars to give away, and it's like, no, yeah, you can't give, can't give the new cars away to, to <laughs> yeah, rent, right? This has three miles on it. It's going <laughs> to yeah. have three miles on it until we sell it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, I think that's just su super great as a business. You can start to scope it out. Right. And go, like, yep, we can now we can wrap. And, and by the way, you're going to leave your car with us for three days. Your re rental's exactly. included in the price. Exactly, right? We just <clears> yeah, wrap it all in. To me, that'd be no brainer. Yeah, it just makes sense, right? Yeah. And it's not like, like I said, I, I don't expect to like make millions of dollars wrapping cars or detailing cars. It's just yeah. a way to, it's just like another just marginally, stream yeah, of revenue. Yeah, for us, it's just, right? a, yeah, it's economies of scope. Exactly. Yep. It's like, exactly we're right. already doing this. So even if we make, you know, 250K a year doing it, yeah, which isn't unreasonable, then it's fine because right. it yeah. doesn't cost yeah. us any money to like keep going. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's a good that's move, man. And uh, like best case scenario, it offsets some of our operating costs, right? Like yeah. maybe it helps pay for the employees that I'm already paying or the building yeah. that I'm already in. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, so like, oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah like, for, that's that's great like, for me. That's a win. Yeah, their job is to wrap. So they only wrap us a couple, like a couple times a month. So you might as well stack your schedule exactly. and get it done. Exactly. Where that's did you the get idea. the, where did you get the idea? Like, how did you learn about operating costs and stuff like that? Dude, just by doing it. Like, yeah. And my business partner and I, we have one thing that I think is in common with us is that when we decide we're doing something, we just go for it. Like, regardless of whether or not we know what we're doing, you know, <laughs> and that was the case with the rent. I had no idea. I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started renting cars. Yeah. I also <laughs> didn't expect it to like kind of pop off the way that it did. So like, we're not where we want to be yet, but we're a lot farther along than I thought we would be. Yeah. So we just, we've just trial and error the whole thing dude yeah. lots of error lots of error <laughs> <laughs> right dude you know um what do you think the what do you think the biggest mistake you made is dude that's tough we've you know i don't know if what, there's necessarily been like one big thing that <laughs> we've like, done oh, wrong shit. but there's yeah. like a lot of like little things you, you know like when you start you start heading down a path like maybe i can use the example of like we there was a time 
in our company where after we had financed all of those cars and our personal credit was tapped out, mm -hmm. we thought, okay, the next move now to get more cars is like, let's get our friends and family involved. Mm -hmm. Let's have them go buy cars. We'll split the money with them. We'll rent them out. You know, we'll, we'll tell them that, you know, they can make some, mm. make some money. It was a mistake. It was a mistake for a few reasons, not because that's a bad model, but one, because we were including friends and family. That's hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very that's, hard to that do. That is tough. It gets dicey every single time. And so that was an issue, number one. Number two, we didn't buy good cars. They didn't buy good cars. So the revenue wasn't there. And there was months where they weren't making their car payments. And they were under the impression that they were going to make their car payments. And so it's like, we're having a slow month. Your car's only rented a couple of times that's not, there's not enough there, Yeah, you know? And so that was really hard. So that <clears throat> happened and it actually nearly put us out of business. Like we were getting to the point where we were trying to keep all these people happy. We had 36 and 36 cars in our fleet yeah. at the time. And I want to say 20 of them were not owned by me or my business partner. They were owned by other people. And so there was 20 people or 15 people that we were trying to keep happy all the time. And so we were like, that's crazy. We were like losing money to yeah. like try to keep, make sure these people were making their car payments and staying happy. Yeah. And one day we were just like, yo, this is not working. We'll help you sell the cars, but like, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. Cause we can't. So I would say that's probably one of the bigger mistakes that we made, but it was a huge learning lesson because we learned that that's not necessarily a bad model. The cars have to be right though. You've got to buy higher end cars. And the ideal situation is, to work with people who don't necessarily need the money, right? They're buying the car as a tax write-off or they're buying, yeah. you know what I mean? They're buying the car yeah. because like they want to use it one week out of the month or something like that. Yeah, like it's we can not work like a big deal that. for you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And if they've got to make the payment or whatever and this like helps offset some of the cost, then that's cool. Because yeah. dude, it's hard to like, like split that between, yeah. like if it's rented on Turo, like between Turo, between us and then them, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you're like, it's like bro, yeah, it's like, shit, there's yeah, not enough like, money there, bro. Dude, like, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, man. exactly. So, so that was probably like the biggest thing. Like that was probably one of the hardest things that we, that we went through, but you know, we learned from it. No, that's a great, that's a great lesson. And, and I know it's always weird, right? Like, why is this interview guy asking me what the biggest mistake is? But a lot of people get into business and, and they really, they go in with rose tinted glasses 100%. and they really think like, dude, I made a mistake. But then the other funny thing is, is like, I love asking that question because you made the mistake. Then you had a huge learning lesson and it didn't kill you. Exactly. It almost did. Right. Yeah, but, but it didn't though. But almost only yeah. counts in horseshoes and hand grinds. That's right. right? Like, <laughs> like close only counts. <laughs> right. Uh, so, but that's really cool, man. And, and now you've learned, now you learned a big lesson. So when you go do this again and you got to be in the same situation, you can be like, we'll tell you the car to buy. Yep. And if you don't buy that car, it's not my problem. <laughs> exactly. And if you buy the car, there is no yeah. guarantee. The, I think the problem was, is like, we were making so much money at the time that we yeah. did, we, we went into guaranteed. It. It's yeah, like, that's, that's, we went into it like, yo, we're making bank. <laughs> like, we're doing good right now. Like you guys will too. Yeah. And then shit hit the fan. Yeah. And we were like, oh man, like we told all these people they were going to be making money and now they're not. And, and like, last thing I want to do, like huge thing for me and my business partner is like being honest and having integrity in our business. I think that's probably one of the other things that has saved us is treating people right. And so I was like, dude, last thing I want to do is like screw any of these people, not yeah. only because they're friends and family, but just because like, I want to do it right. Like I want to yeah. make sure I like do these, like I take care of these people. Right. Yeah. And it hurt us in the short term, but worked out in the long term. Yeah. So you ended up selling all the cars. Did you buy any of them yourself? Yeah. I bought, I probably bought three or four of them. I think my, yeah, I bought like three or four of them and then we helped them sell the rest. Mm -hmm. And pretty much everybody was made whole with the exception of like a few thousand dollars here or there, but it was like it was not bad enough that it was any sort deal. of a deal. Yeah. And everybody learned probably from that one. Exactly. Too. <laughs> right. It's like, and that's the thing we did. The one thing that we did right when we yeah. pitched it to these people is we told them like, Hey, look, it is an investment and anything could happen. Like there are no guarantees, but I'm telling you, we're making a ton of money right now. Like that right, was right, kind right, of the yeah, pitch, yeah, right? kind of like no guarantees, but, but like, we're killing wink, it. Wink, right? yeah, like, like here's the financials. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dude, that's cool. Have you ever thought about get, bro? I, I talked to this guy who does like the luxury limo stuff yeah. where, they, where they rent the, or they yeah. buy the big Cadillac Escalades and yep. just like triple black and like yep. pimp them out, dude. And they go to and from park city. I met, to, I met a guy like that at a dinner at Roost Chris, not yeah. a weird flex. We were just there for a Divi thing. So that shout was out a weird to Divi. flex, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I go to Roost Chris every night, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we met this guy, Roost Chris. And he was like, I was like, what do you do? And he goes, ah, oh, we own like a luxury rental 
or a, a luxury like limo company. Like chauffeur service. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. pick me up at the airport, make sure my, you know, they, they got the wine chillers in the back. They're like, so it's not like a, not like an Uber. Cause they're like, when they're there, when they're in the car, it's like, make sure I, they, they have like requests. Like I need this bottle in the car. I need yep. this, this, and this, like, make sure you have Wi-Fi. Like I need to go on the plane to the truck to the, it's like for like yeah. when Lil Wayne pulls up the to town, right? It's right. Like, exactly. That's, that's where Lil Wayne's going. And in. so I'm like, so I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm like, stop it. You don't make that much money. Nobody that important flying in the Salt Lake City. He's like, bro, we can't, like, we are a hundred percent occupied every day. Dude, I believe it. I, and believe I was it. like, good night, bro. Yeah. Do you, do you have any of those, uh, do you have any of those SUVs? In your, yeah, to in your answer feet? your question, the answer is yes. So we just teamed up with a driver. He's, he's just a driver. He started a company just to be a chauffeur driver. Uh -huh. Like that's his business, but uh, he doesn't have any cars yet. I told him, I said, dude, don't buy any cars. Yeah. I was like, I've got this blacked out Yukon. We've got a blacked out Maserati. That's like the four door Maserati. Uh -huh. It's like, like big pimping, you know, yeah, like you yeah. can get chauffeured around in. Yeah. We've got a limo. I was like, you can, you can rock with these. Like you can take whatever car, the you Range Rover, yeah. like that'll give your clientele options. You just, they can choose whatever car they want and we'll just split it. Yeah. We'll just so yeah. So up. we're working on that because Dude, that's a yeah, huge, that's, that's a, a huge big, market. That's we realized that over yeah. all-star weekend. It took us until like all-star weekend to realize like, oh, well, this yeah, is they're good. like, they're like, we don't want to rent. I want right. somebody to drive. Here. Right. And we did have people that rented. We did have of people course, that rented. We were fully booked out that weekend and then some, but, uh, but yeah, dude, the chauffeur thing was like, the chauffeur thing is crazy. I've never, I've never like, I mean, so when my wife and I will go to like events and like, if it's downtown, we always Uber down there. Of course. But I never, I've never thought of like, Hey, let's get like a nice car and like, well, dude, it's there. expensive, bro. Have you seen how much it costs? No, like, I can only imagine. To rip up there to park city and one of those black, like Yukons or whatever, it's like 250 bucks just up there. Yeah. It was that a 45 minute drive. Yeah, dude. Not even, not even yeah. from the airport. From to, the airport, it's, that's like it's probably 30, 30, yeah. 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. That dude makes 250 bucks. That's like, but man, I feel like that's on the cheap end, dude. I, dude, I don't think so because think about how many times a day they do that. You could, you could they do just that. Go back up, boom, that's boom, what boom, they boom, do. Boom. That's their whole thing, dude. Like, there's guys, that's their whole route. They just yeah. go back and forth, back and forth. They do the it eight times a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? 10 times a day. Bro, that's, and that's one yeah. guy. They're like individually, the way that it's set up, from my yeah. understanding, those dudes are like individually contracted. So the company owns the cars. And then contracts they'll, they'll these hide, guys. Yeah, 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 they'll hire yeah the so that dude whatever. makes like, I don't know, a couple Bro, thousand bucks a, a day just driving up and back. It's that like, would be an amazing yeah, little model, I mean? especially if and you live. I, I actually met somebody who has, they're trying to franchise a model like this. Yeah, so well, they that. should. They should do yeah, it. I was like, oh, they should do it before yeah. I do it. <laughs> they're, they're trying to franchise the model of like in every major airport. Yeah. Um, somebody owns a franchise, like a show for a franchise. Yeah. Well, dude, it just makes sense. Cause yeah. there's, it doesn't matter what airport you could be in Montana, dude, people yeah. fly in and out, you know? Like yeah. And those high rollers everywhere. Yeah. And they, and they need a nice car. Exactly. Like pick them exactly. Up and yeah, dude. And they, these guys too, they do those runs to and from park city, but uh, then they're like, you know, they'll take you to Ogden. They'll take, dude, I saw one, they'll take you to St. George. I can't, I don't even know how much it is, but like, if you want to fly into Salt Lake and get driven like that down to St. George, pay them enough money, they'll do it. So it's like. They, Ooh, man, that'd be a lot of money for me to I do that. Know. I ain't going to St. George. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't like that drive either. I don't like that drive. My <laughs> wife's from down there, so we drive yeah. down there all the time. Dude, I hate it. I know, I know. I I, I'm going down there this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going down there dude, I think and then to Vegas. Yeah, I think St. George is fine, but I just don't like that drive. Yeah, dude. That drive it's boring. It's a pain in the ass, dude. boring drive, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it. about to fall asleep. Well, and and uh, we, do, we do the drive from, so when we go to like Anaheim, we we'll go to Disneyland or we'll go to San Diego or something as yeah. a family. So we'll stop in Vegas and that drive is fine. Like, like here to Vegas is okay. Yeah. It's like six hours, right? Five. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. But that drive, that four hour drive from Vegas to Anaheim, dude, blows. I know, bro. dude. That I sucks. Know, bad. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I, I, it's, I'll it's, fly. We did, we did it in the summertime too. And I thought we were going to die a couple yeah. of times, bro. I was like, if we run out of gas right now, You're we're done. dead. You're done, dude. <laughs> we're like, we're miles yeah. away from water. We are in, <laughs> we're in a first world country and I'm going to die on the side of the road. Yeah. It could happen, bro. <laughs> it, I, I'm sure it's happened I'm out sure there. It has dude. happened, yeah, dude, sure absolutely, dude. That's no, that weird. drives that drives brutal for real. Well, I'd dude, rather fly it any day. Yeah, I know. We fly into Orange County. We'll oh do yeah. That. Uh, but dude, you're killing it, man. Yeah, that's it's impressive, fun. dude. It's fun. And so you just keep finding ways to like take your rental business and just branch out into other stuff, huh? Yeah, and we almost have to, dude, because it's it's starting to become sort of a fad now. I like, I mean, like rentals. Yeah. Like renting cars on Turo. Everybody's doing it now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's easy to do. Like everybody has a car or an extra car. And so it's like, 
dude, we, we're just trying to stay ahead. You know what I mean? Like we got in at a good time yeah. when it wasn't a fad. It was like starting to come on and like Toro was starting to get popular. Well, yeah. And you're just different than Toro. Yeah, exactly. We've, we kind of branched away. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like because our own thing. Yeah. Most people I see do the Toro thing. Like I have a friend of mine who does the Toro thing, but he lives here and he shipped his car to Phoenix. Yeah. So yeah. like to Turo because I was like, but even then I was like, bro, that's sketchy. Yeah. <clears throat> you're a whole, you're, you're like, you know, however long, a like couple hour flight away from that. Right. And like, if, if something goes probably wrong, some guy managing it. So there's companies that'll do that. Right. Like their whole business model is just that, like they get cars from other people and they'll, they'll just manage them as like mm-hmm. on Turo. And that model, in my opinion, is not going to last. And the reason is, is because with the market being as competitive as it is for rentals, the prices just keep going down and down. It's mm-hmm. a race to the bottom. Who can have the cheapest Yukon? Who can have the cheapest Tesla? You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so just like you, in my case, like where there was not enough meat on the bone to split, eventually that's going to be the case for these management companies that mm-hmm. are managing people's cars. Dude, what do you think of Teslas? Dude, honestly... Not a big Tesla guy. I, I like electric yeah. cars. Yeah. I like electric cars. I don't the like Teslas cool. that much. Yeah, well, yeah, see, that I so I ate a hybrid, so it's got, you know, put a little gas in it. Put a little but gas in it. But can't you do all you can, hybrid? You can rock it for, like, full electric. Yeah, yeah. full electric. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, but, like, the Teslas, dude, like, they've just never really done rental, it. Dude. They've never really done it for me. As far as, like, driving experience. Do, do they, do they, do you have any to rent? Do they rent good? We just picked one up. It's not even in our fleet yet. By the time this comes out, it'll probably be in our fleet. Yeah. So it's just a Model but it's sick it's it's blacked out it's gonna be super uh-huh. dope um but dude that is a very saturated market everybody buys a tesla so they can own a tesla and rent it on tarot for 50 bucks a day you know what i mean just so that they can make their payment and own a tesla like that's the mentality that's, that's like dude i can't compete with that you know what i mean well, i got yeah, over it i got I, employees i got a, a i would hate i would hate to that sounds dumb. Yeah. I, I wouldn't buy it. I would not buy a Tesla to rent to that. Well, it's because you're, you're a business guy. Like yeah, most of these people aren't sound, business people. We're talking, we're funny. talking soccer well, dude, moms like, and stay at home. But dads. even, even, even 50. So let's go model three. Let's say you, let's say you deck it out at all. Right. Um, and you can maybe get the long range stuff. Cause I've looked at just buying one in general. So you're probably for a model three, that model three, you're probably 50 or 60 K. Right. Um, <clears throat> your payment on that's over a thousand. Yeah. Easy. Unless you finance it for eight years. You know what I mean? (laughs) Even if you finance it for eight years. you can, but yeah. yeah, Even if you finance for eight years. Dude, could you imagine that for real real quick? We we had people in the car world buy these $60,000, $70,000 cars, put 20 grand down and finance it for seven years, 84 yeah, months, yeah. their payment was still 600 bucks a month. Well, yeah, the interest catches could you up. Ima- could you imagine that? Putting 20K down and going out for that long and your payment's still almost a G? Yeah, it's That's terrible. so stupid. It's terrible. <laughs> that is, terrible. that gives me anxiety thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, see, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't make sense. sense. Especially so like these like Teslas, a, yeah. which, that's ridiculous. Dude. Yeah, exactly, it doesn't. And like who, I would never rent a Tesla for, f- I don't know. I yeah. just don't, I'm not that impressed with them. I have no need for one. Well, I don't really care. The other thing is, you see how much a used Tesla Tesla's going for. You can buy a used Tesla for 25, 30 grand. Yeah, for they the, depreciate nothing, so freaking fast. Really fast. So. And you know what's crazy about that too is um, what a lot of people don't get and what I what I love talking to people about is the, you know, you you know, you buy a Tesla and the whole idea is the environment or whatever. But an electric vehicle with a lithium ion battery is worse for the environment than a than a traditional dude people can make that argument engine. all they want right like yeah. oh like it's it's good for the environment yeah. like just dude, say that you want it doc yeah. because like that's all you yeah need. that's all i need to hear exactly like, like make the argument all day but like we all know <laughs> it's not true we all know that like the like it's been proven time and time again that that is not the case that you're not protecting the environment by well driving yeah Tesla. because Don't when give you me that shit yeah when you when those priuses die and that lithium ion battery you can't recycle that yeah, like no. a combustion engine you can take it apart you can recycle it part you can it rebuild out it. you can melt it down yeah you, you can do I mean? everything a lots of things right. to it. That lithium ion battery, dude, they shoot that bitch into space. That's all they can do. <laughs> they <laughs> drop that, they can they do can drop that into the ocean dude, <laughs> yeah, and hope that like pressure. Cr- but I'm not, I'm not joking though. Like, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the reality. <laughs> There's no way to get rid of and it. And here's the thing about it. Like, okay, fine. Right. Like, yeah, like if Maybe that's the case, that's are. fine, but don't, don't make the argument, yeah. right? Like, dude, I'm that's saving why, the environment. Listen, that's Bullshit. Why, no, you're not. <laughs> that's why Volkswagen's my, that's my hero, dude. Who else has the balls to pull a fast one on the EPA like that, dog? I don't know. Their right? chips and that, that TDI, bro. Yeah, I think got like 50 miles, 60 miles to the gallon. Uh-huh. 
that shot out real bad emissions. Go, yeah, no kidding. Go V dub. I know, right? And it's Absolutely. Like, it's like, yeah, I'm sure people will get pissed and be like, oh, the environment, the emissions. No matter what, if you're yeah. traveling, there's emissions. That's yeah, you just have fun. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. if you want to save the world, stay where you're at. Don't <laughs> stay at your house. Yeah, don't like, move. Don't, don't move. Yeah. I think I, yeah, dude, I think that's funny, bro. Yeah. I don't know. I have a lot of but I just remember a lot of people doing that. Like, and what's funny about hybrid cars is they get worse gas mileage on the freeway. A lot of people don't know that. But like the the way a hybrid works is when, and I'm, I'm sure you know this, but like you step on the brake and it recharges the battery. Right, right. So when you go on the highway, it doesn't work like that. Um, and that's fun. And, that, and people were always surprised when I was selling cars. They're like, oh, I want a good, I want this hybrid because I travel on the freeway a lot. I'm like, well, ah, just get a Civic. Yeah. Just get a gas Civic. You'll actually save more money. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> as soon as you're on the highway, it's more or less you're just, you're, just, you're actually just worse than yeah. a gas one. Yeah. Which I is, believe that. Again, it's just crazy. Yeah. Because not only do you have your engine, but you have the battery now that just adds more weight to the car. And like, exactly. That's one of the biggest ratios for, right. you know what I mean? Right. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, there crazy. are, like, don't get me wrong, dude. There's cars out there like that are cool. There's electric Bro, cars. Bro, electric cool. cars are dope. Like those, like those Hummers. Have you seen the new Hummers? No. Dude, they're badass. No, they're cool. Like they're, you gotta look them up. The, the one cool thing I love about electric, I don't want to shit on it. I just don't like the whole environment argument. Yeah, the cool no, thing about Tesla is like, you're an electric car. You have torque from zero. You yeah, have all quick. your torque from dude, zero. They're, they're fast. So that'll, sh that'll throw you back in your seat, right. dude. Those yeah, no, so there is that. Yeah, there is that. Yeah. But like, dude, these new Hummers, bro. You've got to look them up. They're expensive as shit right now. It's like one of those things where it's like five, 500 times MSRP because <laughs> they haven't made very many of them yet, yeah, but, yeah. but they're electric, fully electric, like a thousand horsepower, something crazy like mm -hmm. that. And it's, it looks like it's a, I mean, it's a wow, Hummer dude. and they go like and crab walk. It does like all sorts <laughs> of crazy shit, dude. They're nuts. Dude, they got all sorts of technology in yeah, them. Dude, so that's, that's cool. Crazy. You know what I mean? It's not cool for like $200,000, but it's, <laughs> cool for like maybe 80,000 if they wanted to sell them for that. Dude, that's crazy. Bro. But yeah, they're so like, don't get me wrong. There are sick electric cars. I just yeah. like the Teslas have never really. I know. I know. I, I've never, I've never been a fan either. Yeah. Cause like my, I don't know. Those new Cadillac Escalades are dope. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah. That's if I was going to spend a hundred and Twenty thousand dollars, hundred fifty thousand dollars on a. You talking about like the Escalade V? The, like oh the, yeah, yeah, those are oh sick. My gosh, dude. Yeah, those that's are nice. what I would. That's what I was like. Damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, those are crazy, dude. And they got a, it's like a ton of power. It's like I, I can't bro, remember yeah, how much power. Like real car, bro. Should, yeah, it's nuts. I would rather buy that. Yeah. Oh, I would too. That's a status symbol to me. Oh. You see someone roll up a triple black Escalade, bro. I drove yeah. my Yukon I, today. I got, I got, a, I got a yeah. black on black Yukon. Yeah. And it literally has. We rent. It's in the rental fleet. Yeah. It has an exhaust and an intake on it. Yeah. It sounds badass, bro. I love driving that yeah. thing because I just feel like I'm like. I yeah, know, but I would sick. say, you know, you see the guy, you see the tech nerd driving up in a, his little Tesla bubble thing. Right. And you, bro, I would be like it, that versus a triple black Escalator or triple black Yukon. I'd be like, that guy. Yeah. Let's go. 100%. 100%. <laughs> that guy's mean, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Bro. Yeah. Well, dude, I, it was a pleasure speaking with you, man. This yeah, has been a really sure. fun interview, for dude. Sure, I appreciate bro. it. Tell everybody where they can find you, where they can rent cars, all that good stuff. Uh, you can find us pretty much anywhere at Zotic Rentals. That's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, at Zotic Rentals. Or you can check out our website, ZoticRentals.com. Got the best deals in Salt Lake. You won't find a better <laughs> rental car company. I'm telling you that right now. Dude, I love it. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it.